I was dating a girl for a while for like three years and it was the first long-term relationship I was ever in that we didn't sleep together on the first date. Every long-term relationship I've ever been in has basically started as a one-night stand and then we just kept hanging out till we decided we were boyfriend and girlfriend. This girl, we waited a little bit. We waited like three or four dates, got to know each other a little bit. Fucking prude laughing at three or four dates. <laughs> Third or fourth date, things are going great, clothes are coming off, and she stopped me and said, before we go any further, there's something I have to tell you, and that's never good. <laughs> Nobody's ever stopped you before the first time you sleep together to be like, hey, before we go any further, surprise, I'm a billionaire, now get it. <laughs> It's always gonna be something you're not into. Not necessarily bad, I just knew it was gonna be something I wasn't into. I knew it was gonna be, I got an STD, or a kid, or a dick, you know, like something that is not for me. All those things are wonderful to have, okay? I'm just not into them right now. I might be someday, I might be into all three of those things someday, or two out of three, realistically, right? Like who wants a kid, but right now, right now I'm not into those things. But I was like, whatever it is, I like you a lot, you can tell me anything. And she goes, okay, before we go any further, I need you to know that I am a squirter. And I was like, uh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> I think that's why it worked out, as long as it did, you know? And we're gonna talk about squirting for a while. And <laughs> this is why nobody talks about it. Nobody knows exactly what it is. Did you know that? My ex-girlfriend didn't know exactly what it is. It's very common. It's one in six women I just made up. But doesn't that sound like maybe it's about right? I don't know. There's very little research that's been done on squirting. And the reason there's very little research is because it's women. If it was guys, everybody would know exactly what it is. But because it's women, there's been very little. So I was like, I'm gonna do some research on my own, right? Like, <laughs> not like samples and stuff. Like, I'm gonna see what I can find. <laughs> that, was, that was a shot glass I mined for whatever that's worth. Um, I was gonna see what I can find. And I, did, I found two papers on squirting, all right? And they were both soaking wet and uh that's a fun joke no i found two studies i found two studies online the first one said it's definitely not pee okay that's the first study guess what the second study says it's pee exactly which means we know nothing about it we need to be funding more research talking about it more educating people being comfortable with it that being said do we have any squirters in the audience with us this evening Come on, guys, this is a safe squirt space, all right? Don't be shy. That's fine. I don't expect, I don't expect everyone to be like me, me, but I want it, I hope one day it's that comfortable. It should be that comfortable. It should be so comfortable one day that you can stand and be like, I'm a squirter, and give you the confidence to stand and be like, I'm a squirter. And then you could stand and we'd have a whole Spartacus situation in here. I am Squirticus, and we can learn from each other. Until then, I will talk about it by myself. Um, my parents come and see me do stand-up all the time, which is great. They don't mind the graphic stuff, uh, but I will, and I've done this bit in front of them, and when your parents are in the crowd and you ask if there are any squirters, you just, you don't want your mom reacting to that. You know, go mom, have a good time. It's just weird for me, because I'm her kid, but 
Uh, I asked the audience. I knew where she was sitting. I avoided eye contact, but I saw her out of the corner of my eye, and she didn't move at all. But my dad was like, Ooh! <laughs> stood. He stood and pointed. I've also gotten to do this bit twice with sign language interpreters on stage with me. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times when you perform at colleges, they'll have a sign language interpreter on stage. And I've gotten to do that a ton over the years. And it's great because all the dirty words and graphic words, you get to see signed in real time. So over the years, I've learned poop and diarrhea and pubes. This is pubes. I, I know we're, it's an audio recording right now, so I'll explain. Pubes is like pushing down. On like it's like you'd think it'd be like a little curly, but it's like pushing down on like a big old, big old bush. They must have, uh, they must have come up with it in the '70s or something. One time after a show, uh, uh, someone who knew sign language came up to me and they were like, "Be careful when you do poop because this is poop, but if you do it like this, it means anal." And I was like, "Great, just add it to the vocabulary. I'll take it. I all I know is poop, anal, diarrhea." and pubes. I can have a very immature conversation with a deaf person. But twice I've gotten to do this joke with a sign language interpreter on stage. The first time it was a female sign language interpreter and the second time it was a male sign language interpreter. So the first time I'm doing it, it's a female and they're always facing the other direction and I go, whoa, whoa, how did you do the squirting part? And she turned around and she goes like this. Uh, I'm doing like a triangle with my hands. I go, is that it? And she goes, no, this is a vagina. I was like, all right, um, no judging, but you know, bigger than I've seen. <laughs> Judgment free zone up here. Judgment free. It's like, how did you do the squirting part? And she goes like this. a little flick. And I was like, I don't think that's enough. And so she goes like this. Much bigger. And I was like, yeah, that's more like it. second time was a male sign language interpreter and I was like how did you do the squirting part and he turns around gives me the triangle and I go correct <laughs> I go how did you do the squirting part and he goes like this I was like, of course the woman made it like a beautiful, flowy fountain. And the dude immediately went to Spider-Man flinging a web in your face. That joke is dedicated to Stan Lee, rest in peace. It's what he would have wanted. There are two reasons I love dating a squirter. Um, yeah, we're gonna still talk about it. Uh, the first one is visual evidence, okay? As a guy, when we are done, it's obvious, right? When a guy is finished, it's clear. <laughs> it's not clear. It's obvious, it's not clear. It's not supposed to be clear. Sometimes after like three in a row, it's kind of clear, but it's not supposed to be clear. <laughs> when a woman is done, it's not so obvious. That's why a woman can fake an orgasm a lot easier than a guy can, right? My girlfriend can be like, I did, and I'll be like, you did? And she'll be like, yeah, and I'll believe her because I'm dumb. <laughs> but I can't be like, I did, because she'd be like, really, where is it? I can't be like, I don't know, it's around here somewhere. I swear, I felt it come out. Second reason I love dating a squirter is a little weirder. Uh, as a heterosexual man, I get to have a facial too. 
Turns out I like that, okay? I get to degrade her, she gets to degrade me. It's equality in the bedroom. It's a wonderful thing. My girlfriend gets to go, where do you want me to come? And I get to go on my tits. How fun is that for everybody? All right, now we can do the dirty stuff. Here we go. Um, 